more though when it's your follow-up play. Yeah, indeed. And uh, um, before we jump into the the next match here, real quick, we just want to uh, remind you guys that uh, Geico and ONOG will actually be at PAX East in just one week. So next weekend will be at PAX East. Uh, make sure you guys, if you're going to attend PAX East, you head over there, uh, check out the booth. There will be some players from uh, all of the Geico gaming teams, uh, Cloud9, Team Liquid, and also some players from Team Archon. You can go over there, uh, get some signings done. We'll also be running a major. Uh, it'll be casted as well right here on this very channel. It's a $10,000 prize pool major with a lot of fantastic players. So if you're not able to make it out to PAX East, make sure you tune in online and watch the major that will be going on. So... Uh, lots of stuff. Make sure you get involved with, with all the Geico and One Nation of Gamer stuff that's happening at PAX East. But let's jump into this next game. Game number two, Zalate with the Paladin versus Lead Paints Druid. Yeah, to actually follow up on what you just said, too, there's actually 128 spots uh, to sign up for the major event to play in it as well. Uh, so make sure you check that check that out as well. Your you know, opportunity to compete in that one. Play with the big boys and see if you can hang. A 10K major, and I believe that goes along with saying that that means major status Hearthstone Championship Tour points. So uh, if you're someone who's looking, who, you know, slacked on ladder a little bit in the past couple of months and are really wanted to make, make a splash at the at the spring prelims uh, and you think you have what it takes, make sure you guys uh, head over there and, and sign up. So that's at the geico.ong.gg, the website that's plastered all of our overlays. So if you haven't gone there, make sure you check it out. Yeah, chalky. Oh, so signups are on site only, actually. So signups for the opens are online, but signups are, are on site. So uh, if you want to make the trek to Boston to head over to PAX East, I know I would if I wasn't literally as far away from Boston as you could possibly get living in the <laughs> continental United States. You're in San Diego, is that right? That is correct. Yeah, I'm kind of in the same position for you. I'm living in East Bay right now. Yeah, so you're you're probably that- equal distance. From Boston. Rip, <laughs> Rip, Rip Arena. Great opening here for Zelay. Haunted Creeper and a Secret Keeper and a Secret. And that's going to help take care of this board. Lead Paint has drawn two copies of Innervate, but not really any action to go with it. You know, typically when you're using Innervates, you use it to get these wild tempo swings on board. Uh, but not really an opportunity to do so. And Zelay, this Cog Hammer is looking so good in this spot. He's going to hope it falls to that Secret Keeper. Does miss it there. So uh, I would expect to see this Divine Shield. Used in some fashion this turn. I mean, he could still... Yeah, this forces a hero power out next turn if he wants to remove the Haunted Creeper, which is really effective because Druid really wants to play on curve. And uh, forcing them to either play, you know, like a, a three-mana minion and a hero power or, you know, not hero power and play a five-mana minion. But this this is double-dipping a little bit. Yeah, that's a very saucy draw there for Blood Paint, too. Able to punish this, uh, this aggressive play from Zelay pretty well. But he's got good follow-ups to this. And this is kind of the difference between when you would take the risk and when you wouldn't uh, in this spot for Zelay. The fact that his turn four, he's got every viable option available to him. Um, it means that he can get a little bit more aggressive here and, and take these kinds of risks. <laughs> the old turn five Azure Drake double innervate keeper of the Grove. That's a doozy. Yeah, Mysterious Challenger picked up too. Hmm. So that's going to be in in a few turns. Still can't can't make that happen. But uh, Zelay has to decide here. Does he want to just play the Pod Shredder and maybe trade into the Mana Addict, or uh, he does have the opportunity to remove the Azure Drake if he's afraid of spell power, or even get additional value by removing the Keep of the Grove. But Mana Addict is actually really threatening. Yeah, I think he. I think Zelay is often going to have his sights set on this Azure Drake here. You know, Blessing of Kings is pretty hard to use. I think given his current hand. Um, and since he's got this Mysterious Challenger, he's just looking for the best way to roll in the Mysterious Challenger turn. And so because of that, he may actually forego the Blessing of Kings simply because he's got Keeper of Uldemon and Pilot of Treader to play on turns on this turn four and then on the following on turn five. Uh, but the Blessing of Kings looks very appealing to me at this point. Like Blessing of Kings, just trade over the Azure Drake and then, you know, just power play through your next couple turns and hope the Mysterious Challenger is too much for your opponent. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I like this a lot. Even though Mana Addict can be threatening just because one spell uh, makes it pretty powerful, uh, that's given Lead Paint has a spell and is willing to use the mana to utilize it. And even if he does, it removes the Honda Creeper and then pushes an extra two damage. So he's not too worried about that. And I, I really like the point you made about how Blessing Kings is hard to, to use, especially since you're, at least your turn six is planned out. 
Yeah. So this is going to be a pretty easy trade here for lead paint. Uh, does take five damage in the process. So Light also swung at the cog hammer, set this mana addict to die. Very keen play from him. And so he's going to fall to 18, Pilot Shredder rolling in a Mysterious Challenger versus Lead Paint, who looks like he's going to have Keeper of the Grove and Shade online to fight this state. So Zelay being at 18, this does this is a little bit of an opportunity, I think, for Lead Paint to maybe squeeze in the damage here. But this draw is going to have to be important for him. He just used yeah. Wrath, too. Oh, Emperor Thorson's good enough. I'd say so, yeah. It allows him to fit in a hero power to uh, take out this... Ooh, okay, yeah, I'm, I'm I, the I power to not here. take out, yeah, just hit, hit in the face. Now Savage Roar becomes much more valuable. Yeah, Emperor Thorson is unchallenged in this spot, so I don't blame Lead Paint for taking the aggressive stance here in any way whatsoever. And this has got to be a mysterious challenge return. I mean, does have option for Keeper of Uldaman, but Lead Paint's only got one card in his hand, so how threatening is the Emperor outside of just being a 5-5 body? Yeah, and he's going to be able to back-to-back -back Mysterious Challenger, which, to be honest, could set up for, like, a two-turn lethal. <laughs> like, if, if uh, he, he gets a reasonable-sized... Um, well, I guess his Pilot Shredder is not going to die, but that's a lot of damage that's going to be represented on board if Lead Paint decides oh. to go for these secrets. This is... These are some tough turns here for Lead Paint. He's pretty much had to answer the board state every single step of the way, and while he's gotten in a lot of damage... He's just missing, like, kind of that one final piece to to put this all together. Mm -hmm. Either way, he's going to be able to swipe uh, to, to remove this piloted shredder. Oh, good fall, I think, for lead paint here. Yeah. Now he has swipe face. Yeah, that's definitely a swipe face. Wants extra damage here, too. Attacked before the piloted shredder gets dropped. Uh, wants to uh, wants to bypass a taunt if he can. Blue Gill Warrior. Not really big stuff here. So he hit five. He's got to be a little bit uncomfortable. 9, 13, 14, 15, 16 damage available for Zelay this turn. It's not quite enough. I mean, but he dies I, to damage in this spot. Yeah. So Zelay has to set up for a two-turn lethal because if he lets the Shade live for... For two, he's dead just no matter what, um, on in two turns. So he has to trade in and make sure that he's going to have enough power on the board to make it happen. I think just mysterious challenger is going to be the way that he has to do it. Yeah, but he's trying to find a reason to do anything other than mysterious challenger for sure. Yeah, but yeah, Lead Paint also has so many outs next turn anyway. Like Savage Roar wins the game. Force Savage of Nature Roar, will win the Drew game. the Claw, Force of Nature, Swipe. You know, living roots. This is uh this is an interesting play here from Whoa. Zelay. So is gonna be running over the, the uh, Emperor with this nine seven. The six five is gonna be pointed to face, and then he's gonna look to end the game next turn with the power that's on board. But this this draw from lead paint, this could decide the game. Ooh, what's it gonna be? Savage oh, Roar. Oh, picks it up. One game apiece now between Zelay and Lead Paint. Three more to go for each player. Gotta feel good about that one. I really like that line of play, though, because that actually... I don't think uh, just playing the Masir's Challenger would have set him up for a two-turn lethal. It would have... Um, he would have only had it, I think, if Zelay had made the attack and and, and proc the Avenge. So that I think that was a really good spot by by Zelay to make sure that he, he did have a guaranteed lethal, had Lead Paint whiffed that turn, or forced the Shade off the board by making it trade into one of those powerful creatures, either the Masir's Challenger... Uh, well, it had to be the Mysterious Challenger. So, uh, really well played, but unfortunately in the end, Lead Paint just got a lot of damage in early and was able to pull out the win. Yeah, and so many outs at the end. I mean, that's really the big one there. Is that just every single card that enhanced damage was enough to end the game. And that's the power yeah. of that aggressive play that Lead Paint had. You know, he had plenty of opportunities, I think, to play it a little bit more defensively. Uh, and choosing to use the Wild Growth before uh, before playing the Shade on the same turn he Wrathed as well. You know, he got two extra damage out of the Mana Addict that way. Uh, everything really added up that game. 